Well, good day and welcome to you. It is October the 13th and I hope wherever you happen to be, you are having a fantastic day. Now, if you're new to Search for Signs or even if you've listened to a video or two before in the past, I want to welcome you. My name is Gary Willing and on this channel, we talk about the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. Now, if you want to know more about uh, Maitreya, you want to you know educate yourself better about it or even after listening to a video or two that you know, I put up, you want to see if there's any truth to it. Um, I do recommend checking out the links that I provided in the description portion of this video. Now, the one that I would start with first would be the Share International site, share-international.org. Uh, there, I think you can find more information about Maitreya, about the priorities of the teacher than you can anywhere else. You can also read articles coming from one of these masters, which would give you a better sense of the ideas and the priorities of Maitreya and these masters. Um, but the one thing that I would recommend too, if you do go to that site, I hope you uh, take the time to read some back issues of Share International because there are people that have written uh, letters to uh, Share International talking about and describing their experiences with Maitreya or the Master Jesus or the Master from Tokyo or one of these other masters. And you can get also a sense of the ideas uh, and the teachings of Maitreya that way too, because a lot of his teachings, you know, when he were talking to these people, you know, they, he talks about it in a very casual way, sometimes even in a very humorous way. So you can kind of get a sense of it that way. You can also, it might also trigger a memory or two that you had with Maitreya or one of these masters that you might have forgotten about. But one thing I do want to point out, if if I may, if you do check out these. Um, these letters to the editor and these back issues of share. Um, when people claim, such as myself, to have ex to have met Maitreya, we're not actually seeing Maitreya as he really is. We're seeing a thought form or a familiar of Maitreya. The times that I saw Maitreya, he was still in London, but he created a thought form of a person that looked a certain way. I've seen him as a man or woman. I've seen him in all types of body types and so forth. But I recognized him as Maitreya because of his energy, because of the love that in the, what he talked about and the way that he talked about and also how that experience changed my life. That's how I recognized it. If you're a Christian and you're wondering if this stuff even happens, you know, when you read the Bible, you know, Mary Magdalene on the way to embalm, embalm Jesus's body saw Jesus as a gardener and said, and what did Jesus say to her? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He already knew why she was going there, right? And then she, like everybody else that has had a Maitreya experience, runs to their family or friends and tries to tell them about it. And what happens, they're like, that never happened. <laughs> Just as the disciples did with Mary Magdalene, right? So I can relate to what she, she went through. But anyway, um, it's more of a modern setting. But anyway, but that kind of gives you a sense of, of what we're talking about. But here's what I want to point out. The, when, we have, when the people who have claimed to have had these experiences with Maitreya are just seeing a thought form of Maitreya, they're just, seeing, they're just experiencing just a little bit of his love, just a tiny bit of his consciousness, and yet they describe and talk about how that one experience that could have happened decades ago changed their life. Now imagine, just for one thing, and this is the question I want to pose in this video for you to look at if you read this. If that's the case, just a little bit of Maitreya's energy and love changed these people's lives, you know, and they didn't, might not have recognized him at the time that it happened. What would, what will it be like when we all see Maitreya for who he really is on TV, in person, on the internet? We, you know, see these masters in our lives, perhaps or, or working with them in some way to help SOP save our planet. If, and that's their full consciousness, right? How are our hearts and minds going to change around that? You know what I'm saying? That's the question I'm posing today. So hopefully you'll take a look at it and look at it from that standpoint. Now, I do have a comment to cover. And this comment's coming from a, a person named Chris Rodriguez, who I don't remember him commenting before. So Chris, I, if you're listening, I want to thank you for the time that you took to write this out, even though I can only assume that you don't agree with what I'm saying based on your comment. <laughs> but uh, he wrote, 
We are not a singularity. Unfortunately, you are dogmatic for that reason. We are created as individuals, selves, towards a common what? Common goals? We are not one. The age of Aquarius will not triumph. Man will not worship idols. Satan will never succeed. And no one has ownership over human beings, period. Okay. Well, since you're commenting on my channel, I guess my, my response to this would be, if you're listening... Um, or even care to hear my response, I guess. Uh, with the exception of whether I'm dogmatic or not, or no one has ownership over human beings, um, those might be true. <laughs> and I know in the case of no one has ownership over human beings, that's definitely true. But the other ones, I don't think you're really getting the point. So I don't think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. But anyway, I I do want to talk about it because I do think it might help. Now, um, I'm assuming you are... Chris, you're, you're commenting on the fact that Maitreya, Ben's master, Benjamin Cram, and even on this channel, we talk about the need for unity, the need to look at ourselves as one and that kind of thing. And I've even offered up several times evidence that I think prove that we are one, like the miracles that have been going on. Okay, healing waters, crosses of light, crop circles, people being saved by accidents from angels, the Norwegian spiral, UFO sightings, the hand on Maitreya, are all examples of just a, a tiny ex bit of examples of some of the miracles that have been going on for decades. Now, it, when you start to research these miracles, you'll see, as I have, that um, these miracles are happening all over the world, in all walks of life, to people who are practicing all different types of religions, and people who are not practicing religion. And such people such as myself who have experienced these miracles are being left with a greater sense of hope. Because like when I went to Knoxville, Tennessee, and I saw the crosses of light for the first time in the in these windows and talked with the pastor of that church and how people are being healed from all sorts of illnesses by just standing in front of these amazing crosses of light, it left me with a greater sense of hope. The times that Maitreya saved me from you know, me killing myself for whatever reason. I fell off a ladder. He saved me from, from dying that way. That definitely left me with a greater sense of hope. The times that I've met my Treya and he's talked to me and encouraged me in a certain way, he left me with a greater sense of hope. So I can relate to those people who, who are being left with that sense of hope. So I always say that because they're happening to people of all walks of life, all over the world, you know, practicing religion or not, that the hope for man, and they're leaving people with a greater sense of hope, then that's true to say that the hope for mankind is for all of mankind. It wouldn't be true to say that if it, if the miracles were only happening to the Baptists. You see what I'm saying? So that, I think, is evidence of hope. But let's just take that off the table. Let's say you didn't believe that at all, right? If you look at the problems that are facing humanity today, like the environment, right? I think they are also teaching humanity that we are one. They're proof in a way that we are one. They're evidence that we are one. It, because we're all inhabiting this tiny planet together. It doesn't matter who you are. How much money you have, what language you speak, how smart you think you are, we're all inhabiting the earth. Nobody else is outside of that, right? We're all breathing the same air. That air happens to be extremely polluted. Now, it's the concentration of pollution, of course, is greater over populated areas than it is over the mountain areas of the world or the remote areas of the world. But satellites now prove that the pollution that's created in a certain area just doesn't stay in that area. It goes everywhere. You know, the pollution that 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 is created in China hits the uh, the the jet stream or the the wind currents and goes right over to North America, and pol and creates air pollution here too. The Europeans are creating or or the you know the Europeans are are um, complaining about the pollution that the United States creates because it goes into the jet stream in the same way and affects them in the same way. So it's everywhere. No one can escape it. And according to the masters, it's going to take each and every one of us to do something about it. Uh, and if we don't, the uh, consequences will be that there will be no more life on this planet, which will be kind of sucky for everybody. So that, I think, is evidence that we are one. But in no way is it erasing our individuality. Or creating kind of a, um, you know, what do you call it, a um, conformity or some singularity, I guess. But it would be a singularity only because, you know, humanity will see that we all need to do something about it. And will be galvanized to action under the inspiration of Maitreya. That's the unity in that. But it won't mean that 
I will stop being me and you'll stop being you in the process. It just means that we'll be galvanized to save our planet, which I think is a good thing. Now, the individuality that we all hold so dear is coming from the influence and the energies of Pisces over the last 2,000 years. And it's also created this inspiration for exploration of uh, in all ways and, and, and means and so forth. From exploring the, the planet to looking to the stars, sending people to the moon, to going to the deepest parts of the ocean and mapping that out, to even mapping out the human body in the way that it's, it has, and even seeing what human beings are capable of and pushing the limits that way is all coming from the qualities of Pisces. But... Just with everything that's good, there's also a dark side to it. And the dark side of it is, is that we've created these structures and this life on, on our planet because we've misused that free will. We've misused those energies. We've now created structures like political and economic structures that um, support the very, very few who are benefiting at the expense of the very, very many or exploiting other countries and exploiting millions of people. And over the years, countries such as an empire, such as uh, the European empires of Britain and, and France and Portugal and Spain, and even to today with the empire of the United States, where we go into other countries and just take their resources away, you know, and we dehumanize that person. You know, those are all qualities of the misuse of our individuality on a global scale. Right, And so the only way to bring about justice in this situation is to truly see ourselves as one family, if that helps you to understand it better, rather than one, we are one family. And that those resources belong to everyone, not just to the United States or Britain or France or, or the, as they say, the developed world. It belongs to everyone. And if you want to see if there's any proof to the principle of sharing, bringing about justice, bringing about peace... I have a link in the description about the, the Marshall Plan. And you can go to the Share International site and you, he talks, my, or my, Benjamin Krem talks about how the Marshall Plan brought about peace amongst the nations that participated in it. It's, it's a historical fact. You know? Now, getting back to unity, it's, a, it's not, the, the masters see each and every one of us as divine. But divine individually, but also sharing that same divinity. They see our individuality as sacred. That's why they don't infringe upon our free will at all. That's why Maitreya will teach us how to live within the law of cause and effect and not to infringe upon our other's free will. We all impose our will on other people. That's the problem. You know, I get comments from people all the time about how wrong I am, how I'm going to hell, and how I'm an evil person from saying these things. They're trying to impose their will on me. They're trying to get me to conform to them. Do you see what I'm saying? In a way, you're kind of doing the same thing. I'm not trying to be critical, but it is kind of the same way. So, but yet, the Maitreya would say, don't follow him. If you're a Christian, stay a Christian. But be a Christian who wants peace in the world. Be a Christian who wants to see the end of my hunger. These are Christian values. They're not satanic values, if there are any satanic values, right? They're Christ, Christian views. You know, Jesus talked about oneness in his own way. He said, what you sow shall, shall you reap. He was talking about the universal law of cause and effect. That law would not exist, and Jesus would not have talked about it in that way, and the importance of living within that law if we didn't live in a one universe, if we were truly separate, what we did and what we said and how we acted would not affect us in that way. But yet it's not true. What we do affects other people. Jesus said, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. If you put out violence, you get violence back to you. If you destroy the environment, it's going to come back to you because it, we're, you know, we don't have anywhere else to go. You know what I'm saying? This is it. So... That's what unity and oneness really is. Again, not erasing our, our individuality. And then where the principle of sharing fits in, we can't manifest unity without 
seeing ourselves as, yes, we all need those resources, so let's allow other people to have it and not hoard it and exploit other people's resources and take it away from them and, and violently take it away from them in the way that we have over the centuries. We can't do that anymore because the people are waking up to the fact that you can't do that. The world is tiny now compared to what it was eons ago where we didn't know what was going on just a few miles away from us. Now we know everything, right? And so, and we're learning more and more every day in that way. We're seeing more and more every day. We're seeing the corruption every day. And it's waking people up to the fact that we can't live like that. So there is no worshiping of the, of, of the Aquarian age. Now to bring in, again, the divinity aspect of it, I want to kind of pose a thought, right? Looking at it just from... A scientific standpoint of space, right? Uh, Carl Sagan, the astrophysicist, said you can't, without the universal space, you can't bake a cake in an oven, right? Well, looking at it as a car, right? Whatever kind of car you want to think of that's in your driveway, there's a space that allows that car to exist within that driveway. But where does that space end and another space begin? Does it end at the end of your driveway? Is that the amount of space that allows that car to exist? If you go down the street and to the left, is that where the space ends? Or to the edge of your town or the edge of your state or your country or whatever? Even if you really spread it out and looked way back, right? Does it end at the end of the planet or the end of the solar system or even at the end of the galaxy or the cosmos? Is that where the space ends? Or does that space keep going on forever? Right? It's the same thing with divinity. Maitreya says we're all divine. We're all individually divine, but we're all divine. But where does that divinity end? Does it end at the end of your body? If you extend your arms out, you know, I'm six feet. So is it six feet in either direction? Is that where my divinity ends? Or 10 feet from my body? Or like I said, with the reference to the car at the end of the street? Or is that where the divinity... We all share that divinity. We're all individual sparks of that divinity. But, and, and these masters will tell you that you're sacred, but then to, to bring it back into the oneness aspect of the sharing aspect of it is how can you explore that, who, what it means to be divine as an individual if you're living stunted lives and having to work from sunup to sundown and beyond for meager pay and you can barely take care of your family or you're starving to death or you're living in poverty or even if you're living in the middle class of the United States where it's becoming harder and harder to make a living. And you're scared every day that you might lose your job or you might not be able to make ends meet or whatever. How is that? How are you going to learn what it truly means to be divine in that situation? That's the pr outcome and the product of, of the Piscean Age, of this individuality. But there's more to humanity than that. We are one. We can live life like we are one. We can create peace if we just shared. It's simple. It's so simple that we don't, but yet we don't do it. You know, that's the frustrating part of it from those people who see that, that we, can, we can share to, to create justice, to create peace. But in no way, again, I'll repeat this thought, in no way does it mean that we are erasing our individuality. So hopefully that helps. You guys take care. And Chris, again, thanks for the question. And not the question, but the comment. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.